Mitesh, welcome to Journey to Point B. So great to have you here today. Thank you for having me, Lucia. It's uh, it's an honor to be here with you today. Yeah. Before we start, because I want to I want to talk today about your journey to becoming the CEO of uh, Empire Protection. But before yes. we dig into that topic, I was wondering if you can just tell us three things about you that will get help us to know you a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Mitesh. I'm uh, 29 years old. Um, I like traveling. And uh, currently, I'm a CEO of Empire Protection, as you mentioned. Um, but I'm also a professor at Mohawk College, which uh, I uh, enjoy very much and what I do. Wonderful. Thank you. And I, I learned a little bit about your journey to Empire Protection. And I was just wondering, Mitesh, if you can take us back to the beginning of your journey of uh, embarking on this journey to, to go to where you are today, where would we start? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, something that I get asked quite often uh, because of my age. So, uh, you know, bringing it back, uh, I started out at Ryerson University where I was pursuing my undergraduate degree and um, I was I was studying criminal justice and I was working security part time as well. And I quickly realized that there wasn't a uh, you know opportunity for individuals that are in the security industry to grow in the skilled trades and have career opportunities in the future. And, um, you know, very quickly when I graduated university, I reached a fork in the road where I could pursue a full-time career, uh, you know, working at a, a bank or a multinational corporation or starting my own business. So I kind of went to the side and I, uh, I went, I went to the ladder of that one and I started my own business with my partner, Neil. And, uh, you know, that was about seven years ago now. And, uh, we really just started because we saw that there was a lack of skilled professionals in the security space. Uh, that didn't have those opportunities to move on to private security as a career or law enforcement in the future. So we wanted to provide that platform for those individuals and uh, ourselves included at the time because we didn't know what we were going to do. So we started then and uh, we slowly grew. And uh, once uh, clients and people around us realized the kind of impact and uh, quality of service that we provide, uh, we were able to uh, grow into a full-fledged organization and um, now we've been operating for about last seven years now, and we have just under 50 employees. So uh, I guess you can say it has definitely gone well. Yes. Why law enforcement? So um, what I can tell you is, um, you know, I've always been someone growing up that has always fought for something that's been wrong. Um, I was always the guy that would kind of go up to the big bad bully and say, you know, you shouldn't do that. Uh, I feel like I've always been protective of others. Uh, especially my friends and um, my family included. So uh, law enforcement was a um, was a very uh, you know, typical choice for myself because it was you know, all about protecting others, enforcing the law, and public safety in general. So in university, I had actually thought that I was going to be pursuing law enforcement, but then I and when I graduated, I realized that I actually have a large passion for the security industry um, because of the service aspect and because we are able to serve clients in a way that goes deeper than, um, you know, what the government mandates are. So uh, that's a little bit about why I chose this field. Mm -hmm. And just for those of us that don't know exactly what uh, your company is doing, give us just a, 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 a summary of what services you're providing. Sure, absolutely. So Empire Protection is a it's a premier uh, protection and intelligence agency that operates out of the Toronto uh, area. So primarily we provide uh, physical guard services for clients such as like event venues, uh, conventions, uh, commercial clients, warehouses, that sort of thing. Um, we also do some cool stuff when celebrities come into town or high net worth individuals. We provide close protection for them, uh, travel escorts, risk assessments that sort of thing. And um, slowly we are moving into the realm of cybersecurity because that is where the next steps of uh, the future are. So uh, in order to stay in line and to make sure that our customers are serviced in a way that uh, accommodates all their needs, we're making sure that we are ahead of the curve in that sense. That's wonderful. 
never talk with someone that provides these services. So it's so exciting <laughs> to learn more about that. So Mitesh, going back to the first first steps that you took from for forming this company, uh, what were some of those first steps? What did you do to validate your idea? Yeah, so I guess, um, you know, before we started the company, I think I was 20 years old in university and I was figuring out um, you know, what kind of organization this would be. So we, uh, I kind of just did a year of planning and just figuring out what this industry looks like, what this space looks like, because I was no, nowhere close to being an expert in this, in the space. Um, I had uh, about a few years of experience at the time, and I thought this would be a great opportunity. But for me, it was about providing a platform for others to use that they can grow into their future careers into. Um, and since then, we've held on to that model quite well, um, and we do a lot of leadership skill development within our organization because we know at the end of the day, private security may be a stepping stone in your journey, but we want to make sure that we provide the skills and um, the training and you know just an overall wholesome experience that can help you get to where you want to be, whether you want to be in security, law enforcement, or you want to be in business, or you want to start uh, your own organization, or you want to be a chef. Um, I feel like security gives everyone a baseline of skills and customer service and dealing with, um, you know, situations and, you know, just talking with people from all walks of life. So uh, that's kind of what really attracted me to this industry. And um, at what point in your journey you felt like, okay, this idea is really going to work? At what point in my journey? Yeah, I mean, I think... I think it took some time to figure that out, but uh, once we started and when we landed our first client, that first client that gave us that opportunity, uh, knowing how young we were, um, you know, gave us that first opportunity to provide those services. And, you know, the first check that we received, it's uh, still framed in our office because that's something that we hold very dear to us. And uh, it uh, really provided us that uh, validity to ensure that, you know, this is an idea that will work and will be built out into something in the future. Uh, I, th I think it's so important, those early moments, those early um, validations that we get, because those are, those gives us fuel to go further and further, further and, and scaled. And you have, you have scaled quite a bit. Uh, what were some of the factors that you think made or helped scaling your business absolutely and uh i'm sure you as you know Lucia, as our first conversation went um i'm a people person i love to go out there talk to people uh, get in those networks get in those groups uh, because being a younger individual when i started this business it was difficult for a lot of individuals and professionals in the space to give us that time of day just knowing how young we are mm -hmm. and knowing maybe we don't have that level of experience but we had that vision and we really had that passion for the industry. So we went out, we networked with all sorts of people from all walks of life, all different types of organizations. Um, and we are avid, um, you know, supporters of learning. So we never stop learning. We always try to learn as much as we can from, you know, people in the space and people not in the space, because at the end of the day, your growth never stops, right? Uh, unless you do. So. As you were going on this this journey what are some some of the most significant stepping stones that like the pivotal moments and, and things like that that helped the company get to where it is now yeah and uh you know you, you hit the nail on the head there lucia because uh you know as i mentioned we were a little bit younger when we started we quickly grew in the industry because we were fond of development and skills and training but uh, the biggest thing I can, uh, you know, advocate for that is uh, putting the right people in the right places. So hiring the talent mm -hmm. that really can help your business succeed, um, not because, you know, you want to be rich, but because they are passionate about the space just as much as you are. Um, so providing them with that opportunity to develop themselves as well as grow, grow with us uh, really helped us um, turn into the organization that we are today. At the end of the day, uh, we're not experts at everything, so it's important for any business owner to know. And uh, I'm sure 
you know, as you know as well, is you got to hire, hire the right person for the job. If you try to do everything at once, uh, it's sometimes, you know, it might be backfire in your, in your face. So it's important to have a strategic plan and just really, you know, trust people because at the beginning, you don't have anything but the relationships you build. Yeah. And I think it's so important to know that talent, it's one of the most important pieces in a, in a company. If you surround yourself with the right people, then you can create the right company. You can provide the right service. How do you hire to ensure that you are having the people that will move the mission forward? Absolutely. So um, I still, to this day, do most of the hiring myself uh, because I like to know who is going to be working for our organization, whether they're going for a special event or whether they're, they're providing a you know, full-time service at one of our long-term clients. Um, it's really important for me to understand who is sitting across the room from me, uh, what they're passionate about. And uh, truly, right now, we look for people that are passionate about pursuing a career in private security or moving on to law enforcement in the future. When I was growing up through university, there weren't these uh, success pathways to ensure that someone that wanted to build a career in private security or move on to law enforcement uh, could work at this specific company, for example. Um, so that's why uh, fast forward seven years, we built an organization that not only prides himself on you know, having a lot of people that move on to law enforcement, but also giving them the skills and the training. So, um, I think that's that's critical. It's very important to you know separate yourself from the rest and have have that little bit of a niche market that you can choose yourself to be with. I know that in, when starting a company, uh, there are a lot of important aspects, you know, talent. But on tar on on top of that, there's client acquisition and right. uh, finances. So I'm curious, what what were some of the things that you learn and you feel like you learn how to do right in terms of client acquisition? Yeah, so uh, just imagine uh, two 22-year-old kids walking into a room, uh, for example, a client that may be worth over $5 million and uh, bringing out this little iPad back in uh, 2017 and doing our little presentation <laughs> uh, showing the quality of service that we provide and the client most, you know, seven out of 10 times, the client sitting across the room is just like, wow, okay. Um, you know, this is great guys and we'll let you know. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, age, age does play a role in this, in this industry and like it does in every industry because typically the, the providers in my space are uh, twice my age or, you know, at least have 10 years of experience before they go out and start trying to acquire clients. Uh, so that uh, big shout out always goes out to our first client that uh, gave us that opportunity. And then, uh, you know, after a year or so of being with them, not only did they give us that opportunity, but got on the phone and called all of the neighborhood clients and said, look, if you guys are looking for a premium security provider, these are your guys, I'll put you in touch with them. And, uh, you know, it really gave us that stepping stone in our journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my next question was like, how did you build trust? But it seems like how you build trust, it was to over deliver on the clients that took up to to uh, took you up on your offer. Is there anything else that you think contributed to you building trust? Because since you're providing such a, a an important service, uh, trust needs to be one of the the the, the biggest factors. So. What are some other things that you've done to build that trust? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the biggest piece of advice I can give you um, is first, don't take advice from people that don't do business or are not in your industry. Secondly, be genuine. Uh, it's really important in order to build trust, you have to be genuine as possible, uh, be authentic, build those relationships as if you know uh, they're coming from the ground up. Don't fake it till you make it because at the end of the day, once one person finds out what you're doing, the word will spread quickly. Uh, so it's important. Mm -hmm. Trust is important to build longstanding relationships. Um, some of the relationships we have with clients are now spanning seven to eight years. So, you know, that level of trust, even though the people have changed over in their departments and their business enterprises and our points of contact have changed over, that level of trust is still there between um 
the owners of our business and the owners of their business because of, you know, what we've established over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trust is built over the years, but it can go away in a, in a second. So it's very brittle. How about the financials? So I know that when we start a new company in the beginning, money don't just come. It's not like open and they will come. How did you manage the early stages of your company in terms of finances? And what are some of the lessons you learn on that area? Yes, and this is a question we get asked uh, sometimes from uh, our own team members and our family members. Um, you know, being uh, being both of us, myself and my business partner Neil, uh, all, you know, being uh, kids and children of immigrant parents that came here and built a life for us, but uh, did not may not have had that you know ability to give us exactly what we wanted when we started a business. Um, we used all of our resources and we tried to work every shift ourselves and we did not take um you know at first little bit wouldn't be taking our own pay for these events and things like that because again stemming back to why we do this is because we were extremely passionate about this industry and um you know it's if you provide a good product eventually people will notice and when people notice um you just continue providing that good product and other good things will come so we really uh, we worked hard um, you know we didn't take any loans or anything like that and uh, we really just started from literally the ground up not knowing what it was going to turn into mm -hmm. so you're bootstrapped yeah absolutely absolutely i remember those days we'd be just uh sharing meals at the back of uh, in the back of our cars to, um, you know make sure we're well fed before the shift and uh, just planning and a you know, <laughs> lack of sleep and just making sure that everything is going to run smoothly. The client will like us, they will approve, and uh, we will go from there. Mm -hmm. what, what was the biggest challenge or one of the biggest challenges that you had to face? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier, but uh, I can extrapolate a bit. Uh, definitely the age factor was huge. Uh, I was, you mm -hmm. know, 22 years old trying to pitch this business that, you know, most professionals were in their late thirties, early forties doing so. Um, the next challenge was finding the right people. So, uh, mm -hmm. great. We've acquired the client, but at the end of the day, the people are your business without people, the right people, you will not have a successful business. So we understood that very quickly. So we aligned yeah. ourselves with, uh, you know, friends and people in our in our industry that could help us grow to the level that we wanted to grow. Um, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, swallow your pride and just make sure that the work is getting done to the level that you want it to be getting done. Um, so finding the right people and uh, sometimes they don't come off of Indeed, right? Sometimes you're not finding them on the internet. Sometimes you are going to other venues that provide security and uh, you're talking to people or you're going to networking events and really just putting yourself out there, letting people know who you are, what you provide and uh, how you can help them achieve their goals. And uh, that's kind of a model that we ran with from the beginning. And so far we've been able to grow with it. And uh, our team really enjoys, you know, being a part of an organization that values their people so much. Um, we used to work, I used to work in companies in the past where, you know, you were just a number, right? You were one of many employees and, uh, you know, maybe you saw your manager once a year for the Christmas party or you didn't, right? Because he was working as well um, because the client was the most important thing and the client is important. I truly believe that. But uh, your people, if you take care of your people, they will take care of your clients and that circle will continue to go around and you'll continue to grow in whatever you do. Yeah, that's so true. If you take care of people, they will take care of your clients. What did you learn about yourself during this journey? Wow, that's a great question. So I think at the beginning, I would uh, try to uh, micromanage everything because I wanted everything to be absolutely perfect. So uh, definitely learned that uh, I need to be able to trust other people to do the job that we've hired them to do. But more importantly, I'd, I learned um, that this is something that it's, it's not because I started a security company 
uh, I didn't start a security company to make money. It's because I truly appreciate and value the service of security professionals and what they provide. Um, so, you know, one of the things I learned about myself is I'm truly passionate about this industry and whether I'm doing this today or doing something else tomorrow, I will continue to advocate for the people that, you know, may not have that platform or that voice to speak up against, you know, things that are happening in the world that are wrong. So, you know, just standing up for what's right. I think that's one of the biggest things I learned, um, you know, throughout my journey, you know, wanting to be a police officer or, you know, join some, join the military in some way, support my country, um, a lot of patriotism. But then I realized that it's because I like to protect people. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that's going to stick with me for the entirety of my life because uh, I get it all the time from my wife and my sister. You're not on the job. We're at the mall. You don't need to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but it's just the experiences that I've gone through. And, you know, when we're at large scale events, I, you know, something, there's just a switch inside my head that just kind of flips where we're having a great time, but I'm also very aware of my surroundings and making sure that, you know, Safety is for first and foremost, right? Because at the end of the day, um, in today's world, 2024, anything can really happen. Mitesh, for someone that is hesitant or for someone that is getting that negative feedback and they're mm -hmm. hesitant to start on their journey, to fight for their dream, to even put it into pra in, 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 into motion, what, what is something that you would tell them if you were to mentor them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, first thing is I would tell them to really be adaptable. You know, in, in any any industry, in any business, we've learned that you are tried and tested when all else fails. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, failure is one one step towards success, if not many failures. So, you know, be adaptable as challenges come. You know, don't get frustrated, take them, see, break them down, see how you can work through them, you know, build authentic relationships with people, right? Really network and, you know, learn from people. Don't be shy of saying, I don't know, or I'm not sure, but I can find out. And lastly, I would say surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. And, uh, you know, if you're in a room full of people that, and you're the smartest person and you're in the wrong room, uh, a lot of times people underestimate the, the friends and the, the, you know, friend groups they choose to be around while starting businesses. It's extremely important to not only have that support, but for your, for the people around you to have that drive, that motivation to w want to see you succeed, I would say, um, cause a lot of times, you know, People like to see you to succeed, but once you actually get, you're getting there, they may not want to actually see that part. So, you know, surround yourself with people that are smarter than you, build authentic relationships and truly just be adaptable. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's so powerful. So Mitesh, I started introducing, um, tradition on this podcast where the last guests recommend a book for the next guest, not knowing who the next guest is. And I'm wondering what, what is the book that you would love to recommend to anybody? And why is that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite books, um, and it's an older book, but it's uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And, uh, you know, that mm -hmm. book really helped me form the discipline that I needed when I was young. But it also sparked my curiosity. And, uh, you know, I think everyone that wants to start a business or is working in their professional career towards uh, some sort of milestone or goal should definitely read that book because, uh, you know, he talks a lot about the winning mindset. And that's something that when you're young, you're passionate, but maybe you get discouraged. So that's something that mm -hmm. you got to stick top of mind all the time. Just have that winner's mindset, take rejection turn it into, you know, an opportunity and uh, continue to move on from there. Thank you. If anyone wants to learn more about you, more about uh, uh, your company, what would be the best way for them to do so? Yeah, absolutely. So you can log on to our website. It's uh, www.empireprotection.ca 
or you can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. Um, Mitesh Shah is my full name. And uh, I'm very active on social media, so feel free to connect with me and we can definitely you know, set something up for a coffee. But uh, more importantly, um, thank you, Lucia, for providing us this opportunity to chat and uh, you know, giving us this um, platform to, to speak with each other on these, uh, these points. Yeah, it's absolutely a pleasure. And I want to thank you for taking the time to share your experience, because I think it's so important for anyone who has some challenging goals that they want to achieve to find inspiration and, and learn from other people. How did they reach their goals? Because I believe that reaching goals, reaching high uh high goals, no, is they, they, they typically follow a pattern that most of us, regardless of the, if the goal is exactly the same or different, that we can follow, you know, like uh, don't give up, don't, uh, don't take no uh, as, as a definite answer, strive, move forward, provide uh, quality service, be authentic. These are just some of the things that you mentioned. And I believe that they are so important in reaching any goal that we want to reach. And I want to thank you for the time that you took to, to share that. I think it's very valuable. I wish you yeah, all the best on your on your journey, I wish Empire Protection will get as big as you feel comfortable. <laughs> and um, I, I hope to hear all the exciting things that, that you guys are going to create. Thank Absolutely, you. Absolutely. And if you're ever in Toronto, uh, shoot me a message and we'll get together for a coffee. Thank you for your oh, time. For sure. For sure. Thank you. <laughs> I hope this episode gave you some inspiration for reaching your goals. If you found it useful, please hit the subscribe button. This will help me bring you more inspirational stories to support your own journey to point B. Thank you.